Find the basic initial feasible solution to the following transportation problem using the northwest corner method. So let's say a company has three plants P1, P2 and P3 which can supply 22, 15 and 8 units per day respectively and it also has four distribution centers D1, D2, D3 and D4 which have a demand of 7, 12, 17 and 9 units per day. Now these plants have to ship the material to these distribution centers such that the entire demand has been satisfied. At the same time the plants cannot exceed the supply capacity that they have. Now we have also been given the cost of shipping one unit of material from each plant to each of the distribution centers. So the numbers in black represent the unit cost of shipment. And the company is looking to find out which plants should transport the material to which distribution centers such that the demand and supply constraints are being met and the overall transportation cost is minimized. So let's say this company has established its manufacturing plants in India and China and is targeting the market of Europe to sell its products. So the first plant which is P1 is in India. The second plant is let's say in China P2 and the third plant is also in China P3 and the distribution centers are located in various countries in Europe so let's say this is distribution center 1 this is the second distribution center this is the third distribution center and this is the fourth distribution center. Now each of the distribution centers has a certain demand. So D1 has a demand of 7 units per day. So demand is 7 units per day. For D2 the demand is 12 units per day. So here the demand is 12 units per day. For D3 the demand is 17 units per day. So here the demand is 17 units per day. And for D4 the demand is 9 units per day. So demand is 9 units per day. And each of the plants has a supply capacity. So P1 has a supply capacity of 22 units per day. So supply is 22 units per day. P2 has a supply capacity of 15 units per day. And P3 has a supply capacity of 8 units per day. Now each of the plants can ship the material to any of the distribution centers and we have been given the unit cost of shipping from any of the plants to any of the distribution centers. So from P1 to D1 the unit cost is 5 rupees per unit for P1 to D2 the unit cost is 2 rupees per unit for P1 to D3 the unit cost is 4 rupees per unit and for P1 to D4 the unit cost is 3 rupees per unit similarly for plant P2 P2 to D1 the unit cost is 4 rupees per unit. P2 
P2 to D2 unit cost is 8 rupees per unit for P2 to D3 the unit cost is 1 rupee per unit and for P2 to D4 the unit cost is 6 rupees per unit in case of P3 P3 to D1 the unit cost is 4 rupees per unit P3 to D2 the unit cost is 6 rupees per unit P3 to D3 the unit cost is 7 rupees per unit and P3 to D4 the unit cost is 5 rupees per unit so now with this information we have to find out the basic initial feasible solution using the northwest corner method so this is the transportation table which has been provided in our example numbers in blue are the supply capacities numbers in red are the demand and numbers in black are the unit cost of transportation now the first step in solving the transportation model is to formulate the transportation table Now in this example we have already been given the transportation table. Now we need to check if the total supply is equal to the total demand. If it is equal then the problem is said to be balanced but if not then we will have to create a dummy origin or destination to balance the supply and demand situation. So let's add up the supply and demand. So the supply is 22 plus 15 which is 37 37 plus 8 is 45 so let's note here 45 now let's add up the demand so 7 plus 12 is 19 19 plus 17 is 36 and 36 plus 9 is 45 so both supply and demand are the same and they are equal to 45 now the next step that is step 2 is to establish the basic initial feasible solution so establish the basic initial feasible solution and in this case we'll be using the northwest corner method so as the name suggests northwest corner method the first step in this method is to select the northwest corner square so we know that generally this is this region is north and this is west so the northwest square is this one which is p1 d1 now the next step is to compare the figure of supply and the demand and allocate the number which is lower so basically P1 can supply 22 units but D1 has a demand only for 7 units so even though P1 can supply more we only want 7 units so we'll allocate 7 units here now the next step says that if the demand in the column is satisfied that is this then move to the right square in the next column so basically the concept here is that we selected p1 d1 first so d1 has now been completely satisfied but p1 still has some capacity remaining so let's continue with p1 so then we'll move to the square right of p1 d1 that is p1 d2 so before we move let's recalculate the demand and supply 
so with this allocation here of 7 units the remaining supply capacity at P1 is 22 minus 7 which is 15 and the remaining demand is 7 minus 7 which is 0 now let's evaluate the supply and demand situation for P1 D2 so P1 has a supply of 15 and D2 has a demand of 12 so we'll allocate 12 units here so now with this allocation the supply remaining is 15 minus 12 which is 3 units while the demand is 12 minus 12 which is 0 units now again the demand at D2 has been completely satisfied however there is still some supply capacity remaining for P1 so we'll continue with the same row that is P1 and move to the square P1 D3 now for P1 D3 the supply is 3 and demand is 17 so we will allocate 3 units here and with this allocation now the remaining demand for D3 is 17 minus 3 which is 14 while the remaining supply capacity for P1 is 3 minus 3 which is 0 so now between P1 and D3 P1 has been completely satisfied however D3 still has demand remaining to be satisfied so now we'll continue with D3 so we'll move to the box below P1 D3 that is P2 D3 so now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition for P2 D3 so P2 has a supply of 15 while D3 has a demand of 14 so let's allocate 14 units here because even though P2 can supply 15 the demand for D3 is only 14 so with this allocation the remaining demand for D3 is 0 and the remaining supply capacity is 15 minus 14 which is 1 so now since between P2 and D3 D3 has been completely satisfied but P2 has not been completely satisfied as there is still some supply capacity available we will continue with P2 and move to the right square which is P2 D4 now for P2 D4 the supply available is 1 while demand is 9 units so we will allocate 1 unit here now with this allocation the supply remaining is 0 and the demand remaining is 9 minus 1 which is 8 now between P2 and D4 P2 has been completely exhausted however D4 still has some demand remaining so let's continue with D4 and move down below to the square P3 D4 now for P3 D4 let's evaluate the supply and demand situation so P3 has a supply capacity of 8 while D4 has a remaining demand of 8 so we can allocate 8 units here and with this allocation the demand at D4 is now 0 while the supply at P3 is also 0 so now with this allocation you can see that all the supply and demand has been allocated so this becomes our basic initial feasible solution using the northwest corner method now let us quickly calculate the total cost so the total cost will be a multiplication of the number of units allocated to a square with the unit cost of shipment for that square so the total cost is equal to 7 5 35 plus 12 2 24 plus 3 4 12 plus 14 ones are 14 plus 6 ones are 6 plus 8 fives are 40 so 40 plus 6 is 46 plus 14 is 60 plus 12 is 72 plus 24 is 96 plus 35 is 131 so the total cost is 131 rupees